AI, it's trending, it's hot, it's the new kid on the block. Wow, look at those pictures. Is that really Jay-Z? <laughs> they made politician guy say something inappropriate. Oh, and it's also going to replace me. Or is it? I mean, as good as AI is at some things, it's also laughably bad at other things. For now, at least. So how's it going to do with Redstone, and specifically teaching it? Well, today we're going to figure that out, and we'll see if my days are numbered. Yay. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to be asking it questions in increasing order of complexity. So I'm going to start with being nice and asking it factual questions. So those are questions with a definitive right answer, something like, what's a piston? Then we'll move on to conceptual questions, like what are some things I can do with hoppers, which will require a little bit more abstraction. Level three will be tech support questions. So those are specific questions about how to do something in Redstone, and also a little bit of debugging. And the final level will be a generative question, so me literally asking it to build something for me. So let's get started. Alright, here we are. Chat GPT. Now, I haven't used this before, so I guess I'm gonna have to sign up. Alright, here we are. So, uh, I guess we just started off with a... Uh, hi? Hello, how can I assist you today? Um... Can you answer some questions about redstone in Minecraft? Of course, I'll do my best to help you with your questions about redstone in Minecraft. What would you like to know? All right, time for level one. Redstone dust is a fundamental component of redstone circuitry in Minecraft. It acts as a power conductor. Oh my goodness. Holy crap, it popped off. Okay, uh, let's... See what it said. Redstone dust is a fundamental component of redstone circuitry in Minecraft. It acts as a power conductor, allowing you to transmit signals and create various mechanisms within the game. Here are a few key functions and properties of redstone dust. Number one, power transmission. Redstone dust can transmit power between different components such as redstone torches, levers, buttons, and other redstone devices. When placed on the ground, it forms a line of dust that carries a redstone signal. All right, so far so good. That's, that's correct, can't complain. Number two, redstone power levels. Redstone dust can have 15 different power levels represented by the strength of the signal it carries. The power level decreases by one for each block of redstone dust the signal passes through. Also true. Okay, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Three, signal strength. Redstone dust can power adjacent blocks and components. When the dust receives power, it will activate mechanisms such as doors, pistons, lamps, or any other redstone device connected to it. Okay, I mean, it's true, but that's signal strength you described up here, and this is just its ability to activate things. So, okay, I mean, still nothing that said was completely untrue, so we'll, let's move on. Four, redstone torches. Redstone dust placed next to a redstone torch will power the dust, creating a continuous signal. Breaking the connection between the dust and the torch will stop the signal. Uh, true. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Five, redstone repeaters. Redstone dust can be used to power redstone repeaters, which can delay or extend the duration of a signal. Repeaters are useful for creating more complex circuits and controlling the timing of redstone mechanisms. So far, so good. Honestly, like, this is pretty accurate information. 6. Redstone Comparators Redstone dust can interact with redstone comparators to measure or compare signal strength. Comparators can be used to detect the presence of items in containers, create signal strength dependent mechanisms, or even act as a simple computer. Yeah, I mean, for subtraction, for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. These are just a few basic functions of redstone dust in Minecraft. With redstone, you can create a wide range of complex contraptions, including automated farms, secret doors, trap systems, and much more. All right, well, let's see what else it has for us. That was way more detailed than I was expecting off of just what is redstone dust. Uh, how about we go with... And there it goes, it's popping off again. Okay, let's start up top. In Minecraft, a redstone tick refers to the unit of time used in the game's redstone system. It represents the speed at which redstone components update and transmit signals. 
Here are a few important things to know about redstone ticks. Number one, duration. A redstone tick has a duration of two game ticks, which is equivalent to 0.1 seconds in real time. Minecraft runs at 20 game ticks per second, so a redstone tick is one tenth of a second. That's actually very true and not the easiest thing to find online. Again, I'm impressed. Two, signal update. Redstone dust and components such as redstone torches, repeaters, and comparators update their power state and transmit signals in intervals of redstone ticks. This means that the redstone system operates and changes its state every redstone tick. Mmm, that's almost true, but you can get between redstone ticks too. But honestly, if I was a beginner just talking to ChatGPT, this is still a pretty good explanation. I'll give it a pass. Signal propagation. Redstone dust has a delay of one redstone tick per dust block. Okay, well that's, that's just straight up not true. So this would have me believe that if I put down 15 redstone dust, that would take 15 redstone ticks to get to the end. That is absolutely not true. So this is the first sign of something that is completely wrong. Let's continue. This delay occurs when the redstone signal travels along a line of dust. The signal strength decreases by one for each dust block it passes through. Okay, so this last part is right, but this is also just completely wrong right here. Moving on, timing considerations. Timing is crucial in redstone contraptions, especially when dealing with precise mechanisms or synchronized actions. Understanding redstone ticks helps in designing and controlling the timing of various redstone devices, allowing for intricate and reliable circuits. Sure, I'll take that. By utilizing redstone ticks effectively, players can create complex and synchronized redstone contraptions such as clocks, pulse generators, automated systems, and more. It provides the necessary timing mechanism to coordinate different redstone components and achieve desired outcomes. Alright, so it didn't do as well on the second question, and I'm sensing a bit of a pattern here. It seems to be a little bit over eager in providing details. It's in the details that it kind of shoots itself in the foot. We'll see if that happens in the future with harder questions. But for right now on level one, I'm giving it an A minus. All right, now for conceptual questions. To create a long lasting redstone clock in Minecraft, you can use a variety of components and techniques. Here are a few methods you can try. A repeater chain. A repeater chain is a simple and effective way to create a long redstone clock Connect multiple repeaters in a straight line, adjusting the delay on each repeater to control the clock speed. By repeating this pattern, you can extend the clock as much as you need. Well, if you just put them in a straight line, you can't, you need, you need to loop it, man. You need to loop it. Command blocks. I'm just going to go ahead and skip this one, actually, because uh, I'm more set on just like traditional redstone, but you can read it and scrutinize it if you want to. Etho Hopper Clock. It knows about that? The Etho Hopper Clock is a design popularized by Minecraft YouTuber Ethos Lab. It utilizes hoppers, redstone dust, and comparators to create a reliable and adjustable clock by modifying the number of items and the delay of the comparators. Okay, and the delay of the comparators. You cannot adjust the delay of a comparator. It's always going to be one redstone tick. You can create a clock with a longer cycle time. It's really close, but the fact that it knows about the Etho Hopper Clock and even name drops Etho is actually pretty cool. I wonder if Etho knows about that. Remember, when creating long redstone clocks, it's essential to consider the performance impact on your world. Lengthy and complex redstone contraptions can cause lag and may affect the overall gameplay experience, especially in multiplayer or resource intensive environments. Therefore, it's advisable to optimize your redstone circuits and avoid excessive use of clocks unless necessary. Solid PSA, I respect it. Feel free to experiment with different designs and combinations of redstone components to create the desired clock length and functionality for your specific needs. I like that, that's good advice. So overall on level two, it definitely did a little worse than level one, but still not too bad. I, I give it like a B minus. All right, we're getting into harder territory now. Now it's time for the tech support questions. To make a button act like a lever, toggling a redstone output on and off with each press, 
you can use a simple circuit involving redstone torches. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. Oh, so it gives us specific instructions. Let's try it. Step 1. Start by placing a redstone torch on a block or surface. This torch will serve as the initial power source for your circuit. Step 2. Connect a line of redstone dust from the torch, extending it toward the location where you want the redstone output to be toggled. Step 3. Place a block at the end of the redstone line. This block will act as a bridge for the circuit. Step 4. Attach a redstone torch to the side of the block facing away from the redstone dust. This torch will provide the output signal. Step 5. Place a button on any side of the block, ensuring that it is adjacent to the torch attached in the previous step. Step 6. Connect a button to the redstone torch by running a redstone wire from the button to the block where the torch is attached. This will create a connection between the button and the torch. Now, when you press the button, it will power the block, which will deactivate the redstone torch attached to it, interrupting the redstone signal. The redstone output will turn off. When you press the button again, the block will no longer be powered, reactivating the torch and restoring the redstone signal, toggling the output back on. This circuit essentially uses the button to activate or deactivate the block, which in turn controls the state of the redstone torch and the output signal. Okay, so that was a little worse than I expected it to be. Uh, I was really hoping that it would at least come up with the word T flip flop, but alas, it did not. But given its stellar performance with this, I'm sure it'll do just fine with level 4. Surely, surely it will. Let's go back to ChatGPT. Alright, now for the final round. Generative questions. Okay, so we got what looks like a cookbook recipe or something. Uh, let's try it out. Alright, so here we are. Nice little location. Uh, let's see what ChatGPT has to say. Building an automatic sugarcane farm in Minecraft is a great way to generate a steady supply of sugarcane without much manual effort. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to constructing one. Materials you'll need. Okay, let's see what we've got. Dirt or grass blocks. Water source. Hoppers. Chest. Pistons. Redstone dust. Redstone torches. And building blocks. Step 1. Prepare the farm area. Clear an area of land where you want to build your sugarcane farm. Make sure the ground is level and use dirt or grass blocks as the foundation. Okay, let me just kind of get rid of all this grass over here. I'd say that's probably good enough. Oh, I missed the source block. There we go. Step two, create water channels. Dig two parallel trenches on each side of the farm area. Fill one trench with water and create a water channel. All right, so we've got... That's a good one. And then on either side of the farm area. So what, like way over here maybe? Okay, we're gonna create another trench just like that. All right, fill one trench with water to create a water channel. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one. Boom, there we go. Step three, plant sugar cane. Well, I don't have sugar cane. Mr. GPT, let me go ahead and search for that. All right, sugarcane in hand. Let's see what we have to do with it. Along the edges of the farm, place sugarcane on the dirt or grass blocks. Okay, along the edges of the farm. So like this. All right, and then over here, well, I can't place them down because there's no water. Uh, so I guess that's about what I need to do. Okay, leave one block of space between each sugarcane plant. Oh, okay, so I have to punch out every other one of these. Okay, my bad, there we go. Step four, build the collection system. On one end of the farm, dig a trench extending below the level of the water channel. Interesting, okay, so I'm going to perhaps, okay, dig a trench going below the level. Maybe, maybe it's on this side. Let's do it on this side maybe. So we've got, Okay, this end of the farm, let's try that. So we'll dig a trench extending below the water level. Place hoppers at the bottom of the trench facing into the trench. Okay, so just facing downwards like this. Connect the hoppers to a chest where you want the harvested sugarcane to be collected. Well, I mean, they're not facing into each other, but all right, if you say so. 
There we go. Only that one's gonna contribute though. Okay, you know what? Maybe I'm being a little bit unfair. It said connect the hoppers to a chest, which kind of assumes that they'd be facing into each other. So let's just, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's do this. Step five, redstone timing mechanism. Above the trench where the sugarcane is planted, create a line of blocks. All right, it says above the trench. So I'm gonna do it above the water here. Oh yeah, also this needs to be filled in, my bad. All right, so above the trench, didn't say how far above it. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily choose that, I guess. Place redstone dust on top of the blocks. Okay, it's easy enough. At one end of the line, place a redstone torch to power the redstone dust. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Step six, piston harvesting. Place sticky pistons facing into the trench where the sugar cane is planted. Oh, it's using trench again. You know what? Once again, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. It's facing, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, sticky pistons. I need sticky pistons. Okay, hold on. Sticky pistons for some reason. All right, let's just continue down this line. Connect the pistons to the redstone line. Yeah, about that. Uh, all right, is that what you want? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so dumb. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait, does it pop off? No, it works. I forgot I could do this. Hmm, maybe ChatGPT's onto something. All right, that's about the jankiest way I've ever hooked up pistons, but there we go. <laughs> They're all powered permanently. Let's see what's next. Step seven, adjust timing. Experiment with the timing by adding repeaters to the redstone line, adjusting the delay between each piston activation. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? Uh... Um... Uh... Alright, well technically it only told me to experiment with it, and uh, I've experimented with it, and I don't like the results of my experiment, so we're gonna scrap it. Ensure that pistons extend and retract in a sequence that allows the sugarcane to be harvested efficiently. I mean... The funny thing is, it's asking me to fill in the blanks in a way that would just lead me to creating my own original design, which is not what I asked for. But I digress, let's continue. Step eight, test and refine. Activate the redstone mechanism to test the farm. I mean, like this? Verify that the pistons extend, breaking the top section of the sugar cane, and the items fall into the, the water channel. Wait a second, Wait, uh, uh, huh? The water will carry the sugar cane items to the hoppers, which will collect them in the chest. Uh, oh goodness, this ain't going well. That's it, you've built an automatic sugarcane farm. The farm will continue to grow sugarcane, and the pistons will periodically harvest the mature plants, depositing the sugarcane into the collection system for easy retrieval. Yay. Note, make sure to place torches or other light sources nearby to prevent mob spawns and keep the farm productive. I can feel my efficiency skyrocketing. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day honestly got a little bit better knowing that I won't be replaced anytime soon. So that's nice. So, what did we learn? Well, it seems that ChatGPT is decent at answering factual questions about redstone, but as soon as you start asking it how to do something, or even how to build something, it falls apart pretty quickly. Looks like I'm safe. For now. Hope you enjoyed this slightly different video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more interesting redstone videos like this. Oh, and also, thank you so much for 1 million channel views. It boggles my mind that in less than a year, my videos have been watched over a million times. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And with that, I'm out. See ya.